Hey there, once again, YouTube. First off, if this intro or video is wrong for you, please skip forward by using the parts section provided in the description box below. As many of you probably already know, my name is Ben Ferriolo, and I'm a beginner amateur seismologist whose aim is to eventually obtain a degree in both seismology and volcanology. If you haven't already, please check out my website. It contains so much information, seismic images, and plots, so look in the description box below of this video and look right under my email address. I am also working on some new pages to my website, so stay tuned to both my site and my channel for any updates regarding those pages. Please check out also videos about Steamboat Geyser and the recent seismicity at Mauna Loa Volcano in Hawaii and at Yellowstone. In this video, I'm going to talk about this volcano here, Mount Etna in Italy. This view here is of the summit camera at Mount Etna provided by Skyline Webcams. I'm going to analyze the most recent seismic data for Mount Etna, particularly because activity seems to be changing. I don't know if it is a major change or just a normal but regardless, I'm going to analyze the data. Actually, my grandmother monitors the Skyline webcams page and most of all the summit camera and mount Edna. She likes volcanoes. She knows that I enjoy studying seismic data as that is my passion. So she told me that it seems like activity was increasing at the infamous Italian volcano. So I checked the data and it does seem activity is changing in some way, shape or form. Mount Etna most recently explosively erupted on December 24, 2018, and rained ash on multiple cities around Sicily, Italy. It was said that this new eruption was caused by a new flank failure. If you are not familiar, Mount Etna resides just south of the southern toe of the boot of Italy. Mount Etna is usually extremely active and goes through periods of increased and decreased activity. However, a shocking study was put out a few months ago that suggests that Mount Etna is slowly sliding into the sea. This means sometime in the future, a very large flank failure could occur, which would create an immense eruption. It would also create a massive tsunami in the Mediterranean Sea due to the sheer amount of rock and debris being pushed into the sea. I mean, it's pretty much the entire eastern half of the volcano is just going to give way someday. And I bet you anything, the more and more eruptions there are, the faster it's going to destabilize. So here we are at National Geographic website. They have this article about it on October 10th, 2018. That's around the time that they came out with this information. The first underwater measurements of Mount Etna's motion indicate that gravity is taking the fiery mountain for a wild ride. Perched on the northeastern edge of Sicily, Italy's Mount Etna is a hyperactive volcano capable of producing lava flows as well as explosive excuse me lightning surrounded pyrotechnics it's also sliding into the ionian sea and a new study provides fresh evidence as to why it's been known for some time that the so-called roof of the mediterranean has been on the move etna is not slipping quickly on average its migration is happening at a rate several times slower than the growth of your fingernails but still, geologists have been hunting for the exact cause of the volcano's motion since it's linked to the risk that the fiery mountain may suffer collapse. About a million people live on Etna's slopes and millions more reside on the coastlines across the Ionian Sea. If part of the volcano near the shoreline becomes unstable and falls into the water, it could create mega tsunamis that would devastate the shores of the eastern Mediterranean. Yes, guys, that's going to Cyprus. Cyprus would be completely wiped out. Israel? Israel would have a very, very hard... They'd get slammed with a big tsunami as well. I mean, the, imagine the entire coastline of the Mediterranean Sea getting wider and wider and wider because there's more water. Yeah, it'd be pretty bad. A massive collapse would be a disaster for a vast and densely populated area, says Boris Becknick, a volcanologist at the Etna Observatory at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, who is not involved in the latest work. For their new study, published today in Science Advances, a team led by More Morelia Erlaub, please forgive me if I said that wrong, at the Helmholtz Center for Ocean Kale, Germany, deployed several underwater transponders around Etna's southeastern flank, which they suspect is the most mobile section of the mountain. These transponders contained pressure sensors that picked up on the slightest movements of the offshore flank. The devices also recorded their positions relative to each other, which meant that the team could detect movement of the flank compared to the more stable parts of the terrain. According to the team, the results show that gravity is the primary force causing this flank of the volcano to move, magma rising inside the volcano 
also plays a role. See, that's what I said. But the team thinks it has less of an overall effect on Etna's seaward slide. No, guys. If eruptions start increasing, let's say all of a sudden Mount Etna becomes so much more active. It becomes more active than it's been in decades. That's still going to push it further and further towards the sea. It's going to make it happen sooner and sooner and sooner. So I'm going to leave, I'm not going to read this due to time. I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm going to leave a link to this National Geographic article in the description box below. So if you wish to finish this article, and there's Mount Etna. If you wish to finish this article, please go to the description box right now and click the National Geographic link. So it does seem that the infamous stratovolcano in Europe is slowly sliding to its demise. But what does that mean? Well, if eruptive activity stays around normal or subnormal levels, it probably will take a good amount of time. But renewed flank eruptions, much like the one seen on December 24th, 2018, could push the volcano even further towards the possible catastrophic collapse that professionals are busying themselves with trying to protect local communities from. A similar type of flank failure occurred not at Mount Etna, at least not yet, but at Mount Anak Krakatau in Indonesia on December 22, 2018, just two days before Mount Etna on the opposite side of the world almost, erupted. And this eruption at Anak Krakatau in Indonesia on December 22 killed around 422 people and injuring thousands upon thousands of more people. Pretty much the entire half of the mountain collapsed and created a massive tsunami in what of the same way that they are predicting will happen to Mount Etna, but I believe Mount Etna is far larger, far larger than Man Mount Anak Krakatau. This image was taken during an aerial survey of Mount Anak Krakatau just a day after the deadly collapse, and it's still erupting here. You can see a piece of the, I believe that's a piece of the volcano that came off because this entire half section just collapsed, creating the deadly tsunami. Although communities are many, many miles away, this eruption and tsunami was extremely deadly. This is the second major deadly tsunami to hit Indonesia in 2018 alone, making one wonder if Indonesia set a brand new record for one location in one year. I mean, they got hit by two major tsunamis in one year. That's not to mention the other tsunamis they've been hit with in the past. I mean, they get hit hard. Indonesia is not a very good place to live. Now, here's an image generated by authorities of before the deadly eruption, before, and after its collapse. Apparently, Anak Krakatau is now less than one-third of its original size, making this an extremely large collapse and eruption event. Kind of like, somewhat like what happened with Mount St. Helens in 1980, and also what they're predicting is going to happen to Mount Etna. Yes. These type of collapse events that kind of explode from the side, especially in water, it's bad. I mean, that's probably the worst type of eruption. A Strombolian eruption, a volcanic eruption that goes straight up to the sky, isn't as bad. It could be deadly and dangerous, yes. But when they erupt from the side and there's a flank failure, huge flank collapse, that's even worse. No wonder this created a tsunami. And that Krakatoa means child of Krakatoa and resides inside the crater of the 1883 Krakatoa super eruption. Yes, apparently a super eruption did occur in 1883 in this location. I am surprised though that it is still this active if it just saw a super eruption no more than 150 years ago. I'm getting off topic. But a similar thing, again, could occur at Mount Etna sometimes, especially if stronger eruptions occur, causing the flank to destabilize further. Now again, Mount Etna most recently explosively erupted on December 24, 2018, with some minor eruption since, especially a probable ash emission just about a day or two ago. Right here on my website, we see the seismic trace of the December 24, 2018 Mount Etna eruption that made headlines all around the world. It wasn't easy to find this data, but I was able to do it. Notice it kind of looks like a steamboat geyser eruption, right? It's very similar, but it's not because the frequencies are far too low. Steamboat geyser eruptions usually occur around 30 to 40 hertz. You could tell this occurs right below, I'm going to say below 3 hertz. And the eruption tremor, the tremor that was occurring during the eruption was very strong harmonic volcanic tremor. And it was very strong, guys. Look, going up to 1 E5, even beyond that. But look at this. I, I'm really happy that I was able to find this seismic trace of the eruption. It is really cool to see. And this also looks somewhat similar to the 2009 trace of the Mount Redoubt eruption in Alaska. 
Again, this is my blog post on this topic, so if you wish to continue reading and looking at the seismic plots in this post, please go to the description box below and look under the links section. Again, this data was somewhat hard to find. I'm about to analyze the past few days worth of data from Mount Etna, but where is this station located? This is the ESLN seismic, where is it? Uh -huh. ESLN seismic station in the IV network. Now this is the Iris G map. Link again is posted below under resources. This allows you to search for specific networks to see all seismic stations within that network to discover which seismic codes that you need to download data. This is the location of seismic station ESLN in the IV network. Notice right here, here's Mount Etna. It's right on the southern slopes of Mount Etna, so we can get some good data, and it is still active. Notice how it does not say IRIS as the database. Notice that? The data recorded by this station is kept by the NINGV excuse me, database, which is the Italian Seismological Database. Want to know why it was so hard to find the data? It is because of this page here. Notice it says webservices.ingv.it for Italian, FDSNWS. Okay, so this should be the data select URL builder. See, data select URL builder for INGV. So you know how Iris and many other data centers allows you to freely download any seismic data for any station within their database, and how that is usually done through some type of URL builder? Well, this here is the data download page, in other words, the URL builder for the INGV database for Italy. Notice when I enter any info in the parameters, nothing changes. Here, here, look, look, check this out. Check this out. Okay, so here's the URL should be where I should click it to download the data, right? Just like every other URL builder out there. Well, look at this. Let's enter a network code. Let's say IV. Huh? It's not even changing. Okay, let's enter nothing. Nothing. Look at this. Nothing. Nothing. I can enter whatever I want up here and nothing. It it should be printing out a URL to click and to download that data, but for some reason the INGV URL builder to download seismic data is broken. Look at this. Look. It's not even, look, it's not even doing anything down here. It should definitely be adding this when I'm adding it, but nothing. So that kind of frustrated me a little bit. Now, knowing me, I am not going to stop there. I will never give up until I can't go on any longer. So, I decided to create my own data download link. Yes, and guess what? It actually works. This is the download link that I did. Now, don't pay attention to these down here. I'm not going to mess with those right now. But, this is the link that I came up with. After over 50 tries, I was finally able to get the perfect link. It can be edited in any way, including adding different networks, different stations, and time periods. However, right now, I have it set to the data stream for station ESLN on Mount Etna. Just to prove to you this works, we are going to download the most recent data possible. If you would like this link and the explanation of how to edit it to download seismic data from Italy, please shoot me an email. Okay, so what we're going to do, let me zoom this out for a second. Okay, so we're going to copy this link. It says start time 2019, January 27th to the 29th. So this will give us the most recent data right now to the 29th because it's not 29th yet. It's not that yet, so it'll top it off. Let's copy. Now let's go down to this blank page right here. Here we are on Mozilla Firefox on a blank page. Once you have all the parameters set within the custom link I created, simply copy it, which I just did, and go here. Notice how it says paste or paste and go. Since right now I am certain what I have selected is correct, I'm just going to press paste and go. And notice when I press paste and go, this will change from blue to black, and I'll show it starting to download. Paste and go. And will it do it right here in the corner? Yes, it did. It did it. It is downloading. So now we just have to, oh, looks like it is completed. Okay. Once that is downloaded, it is time to open the file and add it to the source section. Once added, let's double click it. But right now, actually, I think I already have it open. Whoops, I just want to show this as an example. So let's open file. Let's go to downloads. Ben Ferriolo. Go to downloads. And here it is right here. Let's see if it's the most recent data stream for ESLN. Let's check it out. 
Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. You see all these earthquakes, right? Yeah, well, I'll look at that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we'll talk about this in just a second. Now, I am about to analyze this uh, data stream here in just a second, but there was an increase in activity just about a day or so prior from this time period, so I would like to review that first and then review the most recent data. So let's close out of this just real quick. Close files. Open file. Let's go to the desktop just real quick to the page. Here it is right here. From 0 UTC 25th, to 0 UTC the 27th. So two days worth of seismic data, and we have it right here. And again, my grandmother knows that I love studying volcanoes and the seismic signatures they create, and she noticed that there is some more ash uh, overnight at Mount Etna. So it seems like there was an eruption somewhere. It looks like there was an eruption right around here. Small, small ash emissions though. Remember, we are stationed ESLN in the IV network right on the southern slopes of Mount Etna. Now I want you to notice something real quick. Look at all of these little tiny guys. Let's go all the way to the beginning of the data stream. Notice this? Let's look at the background tremor. The background tremor is pretty much gone, guys. Here, let me show you something. Here, I will be back. Remember that background tremor? Here, let me show you. Background tremor, look at that. It, it looks weird, doesn't it? Well, you're probably saying, how do I know if it looks weird or not? I don't know what it looks like normally. Well, keep this in mind. I will show you what it looks like normally. And let's look at the spectrogram. Yeah, that's odd. Okay, and then let's go back, close files. I will show you what it actually looks like normally that it's looked like for months and months and months and months and months, even after the December 24th eruption. Now, right here is the eruption. Remember the seismic plots that I put on my website? This is the eruption right here that I put plots to on that one blog post. This was during the eruption, so that's why this harmonic volcanic tremor sequence is so strong. Usually it should not be this strong unless it's during an eruption, guys. But up here, prior to the eruption, we saw harmonic volcanic tremor going to about 3,000, 4,000 amplitude count. That's normal. Mount Etna sees harmonic and volcanic tremor all the time. I mean, for months straight, guys. I mean, it sees it all the time because it's always erupting in some way, shape, or form. So we got normal harmonic volcanic tremor. Happens a lot. Happens a lot. Going to 3,000, 4,000 amplitude count. Let's go to a few days forward after the eruption. Notice 5,000, almost a 10,000 amplitude count. That's some very strong background tremor. Let's go down. Yeah, okay, so let's keep going forward. It looks the same. Going to about 4,000, yeah, about 4,000, 5,000 amplitude count. Look at that. See, okay, so this happens a lot. This is quote-unquote normal activity. But why don't we go back to the file that I just had open and look at what the background tremor looks like, guys. Check this out. Let me turn persistent rescale off. Let me go back. Let's just go right here in between these earthquakes. Look at that. Doesn't it look so much different? It looks way different. So I don't know how the activity is definitely changing because low frequency background tremor is being replaced by these events right here. Notice these strange low frequency harmonic earthquakes. I call them harmonic earthquakes because a lot of them do have harmonic characteristics where the waveform spacings are almost perfectly spaced in some cases, some cases not. But they are seeing large amount of low frequency earthquakes. Guys, I checked all of these. These are low frequency earthquakes. Indicative of some type of magma intrusion. Magma's doing something down there right now, guys. I don't know exactly what. I'm not familiar with every single type of process. Look at this. The low frequency again, the low frequency background tremor is being replaced by these very strange low frequency earthquakes. I thought that was very intriguing. So, so first, during the flank eruption, we had low frequency background tremor for months, 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 maybe even years, I wouldn't be surprised. And then we had some high frequency earthquakes, some large ones too. And then activity started to calm and low frequency background tremor started to subside. But once it started to subside, it was starting to be replaced by low frequency earthquakes. I, I don't think that's a good thing. 
I'm thinking that there is another major eruption coming, maybe along the lines of a new flank eruption, kind of like we saw on December 24th, 2018. We do have some high-frequency earthquakes here, though. We do have some of them. Check this out. Yep, there's another high-frequency earthquake. Can't go above 10 hertz because this seismic instrument does not record above 10 hertz for some weird reason. But let's take a look at some of these. Look at that. Look at some of these low-frequency earthquakes that it is being replaced by. I mean, the, the low-frequency background tremor is pretty much gone. It's pretty much gone, guys, which is very strange. Very strange. Usually, it has it all the time. What is that? That is a strange surface wave. Look at look at this, guys. Almost yeah, almost perfectly spaced. Almost perfectly spaced. My goodness. That's why I call them low frequency harmonic earthquakes. Now I do have to say some of these low frequency earthquakes look very similar to the low frequency earthquakes that Yellowstone Lake saw about what was that about a week ago, I think. About a week ago, there were some stronger low-frequency earthquakes going to about, I'm going to say probably 1,000, 2,000 amplitude count or so. Too strong, but they did occur at Yellowstone Lake about a week ago. And they, some of them did have harmonic characteristics where the waveform spacings were nearly perfect. That is where they get the term harmonic tremor from, because the harmonic tremor that... Uh, Oh, who discovered it? I forget the name of the guy who discovered it, but I think he discovered it from the volcano called Nevada del Ruiz. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think it was from Nevada del Ruiz volcano where they first discovered harmonic tremor. And the reason why they called it harmonic was because the waveform spacings were almost perfectly regular, making them look like harmony, you know, like a musical symphony. So again, we do have an increase in low-frequency earthquakes at Mount Etna with a strange absence in low-frequency background tremor. Okay, so I'm done with that. I want to go back and look at the most recent. Remember how we downloaded the most recent data possible just a little bit ago as an example? Well, let's go check that out real quick. Benfair downloads. Come on, buddy. And here it is right here. This is the most recent data stream for ESLN in the IV network on the southern slope of Mount Etna. Let's turn Persistent Rescale off and go all the way to the beginning up here. Oh my goodness, look at all of these, guys. Look at all of these. Look, there's thousands. There's got to be thousands. I don't think there's hundreds. I think there's thousands of them, guys. Look at this. My goodness, what is going on at Mount Etna? Look at that. Multiple, and they're all low-frequency earthquakes occurring almost. Wow, look at that, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Occurring almost at, in a drum beat pattern. Look at that. That is crazy. And they're pretty much all low-frequency earthquakes, too. Let's scoot this down just a tad. Wow, that's pretty interesting, guys. And let's go forward. Okay. Another low-frequency earthquake, low-frequency earthquake, low-frequency earthquake. I can't, if, if I went through every single one of them, we'd be sitting here for a long time. Notice, though, there seems to be a little bit of a pattern. Notice how they seemed smaller in the beginning of this day, right? They looked smaller, but more closely spaced. Notice how throughout the day, they got bigger and bigger and bigger, but they weren't as spaced. Notice that? They were a little bit more spaced, I mean. Sorry, excuse me. So they got larger, but there weren't as many. But still, there's thousands of them, guys. This looks very similar, similar excuse me, to the drumbeat pattern that they saw during the 2004-2006 Mount St. Helens eruptions. Very similar. Doesn't carry the same exact rhythm that the Mount St. Helens eruptions did, but it's very similar. And oh my god, look at this low-frequency earthquake. That's exact, exactly the one that Yellowstone saw multiple times, not too long ago. Just what, a week ago I think it was? And I even did a video on that. My goodness, all of these are low-frequency earthquakes. I'm glad my grandma told me something could be changing. Because <laughs> she watches Mount Etna all the time uh, uh, with the summit camera. And I always tell her, if you ever see anything change, let me know and I'll check that seismic data. Look at this low-frequency event. Look at this. Up to, what, 12,000 amplitude count? That's very strong. Very strong. My goodness, multiple low-frequency events. Still, still, 
My goodness. So right now it's 12.51 p.m. Pacific Time, January 28th, 2019. Why don't we go look at the most recent data stream? So in the middle of the day, here we are back right here where I was just looking at. Now let's go forward just one. Notice how there are less of them. It did calm down at the beginning of the 28th. It did calm down. And as the most recent data stream, this is the most recent. As of about 20 minutes ago or so, this is the most recent. It is increasing once again. But it looks like low-frequency background tremor could be returning. Could be. I'm not saying it is, but it's a possibility right now. Lots of low-frequency earthquakes. Thousands of them, guys. I'm just so ecstatic that this is happening. Well... I, I'm hoping that it, the mountain doesn't collapse because a lot of people are going to die. I don't want that at all. But it's very exciting studying this stuff, guys. I love studying low-frequency earthquakes caused by um, magmatic activity. I love it. Yep. And some of these low-frequency earthquakes, again, were seen at Yellowstone about a week ago. And that's why I do what I do. I don't do it because I have to. I do it because I enjoy it. This is some strange low frequencies right there. Yep, so the most recent data stream, there was one last low frequency earthquake at 2037 UTC on the 28th. Then we had a larger event right here with some higher frequencies. Again, I cannot go through every single one of them, guys. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. Here, let's look at this. My goodness, look at all of them. All of these low-frequency earthquakes, pretty much all of them, occurring in a very strange pattern, too. So it does seem like activity is ramping up just barely for Mount Etna. So that is it for right now. Hey, look at Split Cone Geyser is steaming a little bit. Remember, this mound to the left that seems to have been growing the past, like, decade or so, I bet it is growing just a tiny bit because there's a lot of pressure down there, guys. It is rumored that Split Cone Geyser, this mound right here, is related to Old Faithful in some way. They are thinking these systems could be connected. I'm going to actually look into that today because uh, I just heard some stuff about Split Cone Geyser. Not many people know that this is even a geyser, but once in a while it does create eruptions, water eruptions, up to about one feet to one and a half feet. It's looking beautiful there today. Man, these people are lucky to be walking there right now. I mean, there isn't really any earthquake swarm, so right now would be the time to go to Yellowstone, guys. Right now. But if an earthquake swarm started, I'd hightail it out of there. <laughs> so again, that's it for right now. It seems activity at Mount Etna is changing in an odd way. Could another large eruption be approaching? And why has the low-frequency harmonic and volcanic tremor been replaced by thousands of low-frequency earthquakes? I don't know, but I will keep an eye on it closely. If any of you wish to know how to seismically monitor Mount Etna and other volcanic hazard areas, please visit my website or shoot me an email. I will be back soon, sooner if activity increases again. God bless. Be safe. The truth is considered hater fear to those who hater fear the truth. Ben Ferriola signing off.